friends welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here happy Monday it's a Monday so it's another meal prep day I have three really good recipes for you that I am so incredibly excited about so if you are here for three new WW friendly calorie friendly recipes give this video a big huge thumbs up and if you're new or you haven't yet subscribed I would love to have you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video down in the description box you're going to find a plethora of amazing things first of all you will find my brand newly released recipe ebook packed with 50 recipes all point plans included as well as calories it's amazing if you struggle with breakfast recipes even on the weekend during the week highly highly recommend and a lot of these recipes can be meal prepped and taken with you to work or school so definitely check that out nutrition coaching is also in the description box I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and personalized macros and calories also highly recommend that as well links discounts to everything I shared with you today as well as all of my other favorite things and lastly my Facebook group we'd love to have you join that community as well so let's go ahead and jump into this meal prep because these recipes are amazing. For breakfast this week, I'm making homemade sausage and cheddar biscuits. I am so excited for this. You can pair this with some eggs, some fruit. This will be the main part of my breakfast for the week. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need green onions, light shredded cheese, 99% extra lean ground turkey, light butter, low fat buttermilk, all purpose flour, salt, baking powder, baking soda, and then I'm going to season my turkey with poultry seasoning. That way it'll give that same vibe as if I were using a breakfast sausage. So let's go ahead and jump into our recipe. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my pound of ground turkey and a couple tablespoons of that poultry seasoning to a pan. We're going to get this browned up. To get started on our biscuits, we're going to add three cups of all-purpose flour to a large bowl. One teaspoon of salt. This is a half of a teaspoon. Half of a teaspoon of baking soda. And one tablespoon of baking powder. Go ahead and give that a mix until everything is combined. We're going to add in two tablespoons of light butter. And we're going to kind of cut that into the flour mixture until it's a little bit more chunky. Now we're going to stir in two cups of light shredded cheese. I'm going to cut in a couple of green onions. I just use kitchen shears for this. This is optional, so you do not have to add in the green onions, but I think it's going to add a really good flavor. So I ended up adding in four green onion stalks just so that I had a little bit more onion per biscuit. Now we're going to add the pound of turkey that we made into sausage and add that, stir that really well. And lastly, we're adding in one cup of low fat buttermilk and then we are just stirring until combined. Onto my cutting board here, I went ahead and added some saran wrap just so that it doesn't make a big mess and stick. I'm going to put that big bowl of dough onto the cutting board lined with the saran wrap. And then with my hands, I'm just going to press the dough together. I want to pat this into a rectangle or close to a rectangle. We want to cut this into about 12 pieces. So I'm going to cut down the middle and then I'm going to cut each one of these sides into six pieces. And then what I like to do is take each section, so one twelfth of the dough, I'm going to reform it into the shape of biscuit that I want since I wasn't able to get an entirely rectangle piece. So I'm just going to shape it into a biscuit and then that is going on to a greased baking sheet. Won't you sing out your frustration? Say a word. Keep on 
And there are the biscuits. I went ahead and sprayed them with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray just so that they would brown up nicely. I have to say, these look incredible. These are going in a 425 degree oven for 18 to 20 minutes or until they are golden brown. Look at these beautiful sausage biscuits. These look absolutely incredible. I'm super excited for these. These are huge. So let's go over the points and calories. So a serving is one biscuit. We made a total of 12 biscuits. They are five points on the blue and purple plan and six points on the green plan just because we do have to count for the ground turkey on the green plan. They're 209 calories a piece, which is not bad at all. And like I said, just pair this with some fruit, some eggs. You have a perfect, delicious breakfast. I cannot wait for these all week. For lunch this week, I'm making black bean and cheese enchiladas. So this is a vegetarian recipe. If you're interested, you can also add a protein source if you would like, but I'm doing quite a bit of modifications. This is more of a spicy ranchero sauce, and I'm going to make it a little less spicy. But of course, I will link the original recipe on my website along with my modifications. But let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need some green onions. I'm using a pack of fajita seasoning from the Thrive market as my seasoning. Since I'm not using ancho or chipotle peppers in my sauce due to the heat, I'm going to substitute with the fajita seasoning. You'll need a can of black beans, mission extra thin corn tortillas, light shredded cheese, tomato paste. I'm using lime juice, some type of oil. I have avocado oil here, salt, vegetable broth, and lastly some minced garlic. The first thing I'm going to do is dice up three green onions, and I forgot to show you in normal gen fashion that you are going to need an onion. I just need to use this red onion up, so I'm going to be using that. Keep on staring at the pavement, God knows who hurt. Now we're going to put together the sauce for our enchiladas. So I did just put my red onion chopped up into my bowl. Here I have two cups of water and two cups of vegetable broth. I'm going to add quite a big scoop of minced garlic, two tablespoons of tomato paste, about a tablespoon of lime juice, pinch of salt, two teaspoons of oil, and my entire packet of fajita seasoning. The Thrive seasonings are so good, super, super affordable. I will link the Thrive Market down below if you're not a member. Highly recommend if you want to save money on good, clean ingredients. They have thousands upon thousands of products on their website and their seasonings price, taste cannot be beat. So I'm going to stir all that in just until combined. Now I'm going to put together the bean and cheese mixture for the inside. So I'm going to add one can of drained and rinsed black beans, one cup of light shredded cheese, and half of my chopped up green onions, and give that a stir just to get everything combined. To a 9 by 13 baking dish, I'm going to add a good amount of this sauce just to kind of coat the bottom of the baking dish. I went ahead and warmed up my tortilla a little bit just so it's a little easier to use and it will not tear or crack. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons or so of the black bean and cheese mixture into the middle, fold that up, kind of roll that over and place that into the baking dish with the sauce. And we're repeating for all 12 of our tortillas. my sauce is very thin compared to what you would have if you actually followed the original recipe. So I'm not going to use all of my sauce. I don't think that it would serve my dish at all. I think if anything, it would just make it really, really soggy. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this sauce right over the top. I would recommend 
if you decide to make this recipe at home to just follow the original recipe make the ranchero sauce per the instructions that way you have that nice thicker sauce i just can't do the spicy so I went ahead and made my modifications. I did want to get the tops of the enchiladas a little bit wet at least, just so that it wouldn't be dry. And then I'm going to add my final cup of light shredded cheese right over the top. And then I am going to take just a tiny bit more of my sauce and put that over the top of the cheese just to kind of wet it a little bit. I think too that it will cook and melt a bit better as well. I'm going to pop this into a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so just until that cheese is melted and you can see that sauce bubbling up around your enchiladas. Oh my goodness, look at my enchiladas. These actually turned out better than I thought they would. You can see the sauce kind of thickened up a little bit in cooking, which makes me a little bit relieved. I'm excited for these, you guys. So the final step is I'm just going to sprinkle the last little bit of those green onions right on top and we'll go over points and calories. So the entire pan of enchiladas makes six servings. So basically you get two of the tortillas. So this whole section here per serving and it is five points on blue and purple and seven on green because you do have to count points for the black beans, 203 calories or about 101, 101 and a half calories per enchilada, which is not bad at all. This is going to be so good this week. I'm probably going to pair mine with some avocado, maybe some guacamole, sour cream. Cannot wait. For dessert this week, we are so excited, both Troy and I, we're making homemade, and these are supposedly the best, homemade lemon bars. So let me show you what's in my recipe. First, you're going to need some eggs, a fresh lemon, and some lemon juice, or several fresh lemons, because we need a lot of lemon juice for this recipe. Some light butter. I have the Lakanto Organic Monk Fruit Sweetener, my very favorite, and the Lakanto Powdered Sweetener. These are both my go-tos. They don't leave that cooling effect. They're so good. I will link Lakanto down below with 15% off for you. You're also going to need a lot of flour and some salt. So to start the lemon bars, the first thing we have to do is make the crust. So we're going to add two cups of all-purpose flour, about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. The recipe calls for a half of a cup of sweetener. I find that with the Lakanto, a little goes a long way. So I'm going to half that, especially for the crust. I don't know how sweet we need the crust. So I'm going to do a quarter of a cup, but just be mindful that the recipe does call for a half of a cup of sweetener and then an entire cup of light butter. And then I'm going to cream this together with my handheld mixer. I'm going to spray my eight by eight or a nine by nine baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. And then we're going to take the crust mixture, pour that into the baking dish, and then it should be soft enough that we can press it down see how it's forming a crust so go ahead and press that down evenly in the bottom of the baking dish we're going to put the crust into a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes now we're going to start the filling while the crust is in the oven so in my big cup here i actually have a little over a cup of the lakanto monk fruit and a cup of flour again the recipe calls for three cups of sugar so i did pretty close to one and a half cups just because I find it's too sweet. Even though Lakanto is a one-to-one -one ratio, I always cut back when I use it, but that's my personal preference. I'm going to zest in one full lemon. I want one full cup of lemon juice, so I'm actually going to cut the lemon that I just zested. And I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it into a cup here, the same one I used for the sugar and flour. Until I have a cup, I will compensate the remainder with lemon juice from my little lemon juice container. We're going to add in the lemon juice and then crack in six whole eggs. Now we're going to pour this delicious lemon mixture right over the top of our hot crust. And our lemon bars are going into our 350 degree oven again for another 25 to 30 minutes or until set. Lemon bars just came out of the oven, you guys. This smells so good. 
My house smells incredible. I'm going to allow these to cool completely, and right before they're cool, we'll go ahead and dust them with a little bit of powdered sugar once they are completely cooled. Now that we're cooled, I'm going to sprinkle some of my Lakanto powdered right over the top of our lemon bars. I cannot tell you how amazing these bars look and smell. So let's go ahead and go over the points and calories for the lemon bars. I'm so excited for these. So I decided to go ahead and cut my lemon bars into 12 bars. This was per Troy's request. I said, do you want bigger bars or smaller bars? He said bigger bars. So by cutting them into big bars, this is the size. I mean, that is a good sized lemon bar. I'm going to give you points and calories for 12 bars and 24 bars. So if you cut them into 12, like I did here, they are five points per bar on blue and purple and six on green because you have to count for the eggs. This bar right here is 202 calories which is way less than half of what you find at a bakery for a lemon bar if you decide to cut into 24 bars they end up being three points on all plants because you're dividing those eggs out over so many bars it doesn't affect the point half of this bar because cutting it into 24 would be 101 calories so however many bars points calories you want to spend but I know both of us are excited for these. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three recipes. As always, they are on my recipe website. I'll link that down in the description box, along with my recipe ebook, nutrition coaching, links, discounts to my favorite things, and my Facebook group. Lots of good info down in that description box. Again, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new and you're not part of my channel, I'd love to have you here. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell right next to it so you never miss a single video. Happy Monday, friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!